Let me throw a word up here at you. Some of you probably heard it. Um, as I said, a tree will respond to things. <clears throat> if I could, could I get you to come up here for a minute? Okay. <clears throat> if I'm next to you, okay, and you're a tree, and I didn't take a shower last night, what can you do to get away from me? Oh, Whoa. heads up over there. Uh, that one heard it. <laughs> Nothing. If you're a tree, you're rooted in the ground, okay? <clears throat> you're rooted in the ground, there's not much place you can go. So you kind of have to, you have to deal with it. And that's what trees have done to, for, to survive, really. And that's why I've got this word compartmentalization. I'm not sure if I spelled it right or not, but it's too early in the morning to worry about it. But compartmentalization, basically what the trees do is they just deal with it and they try and grow around it. Okay, um, what we found when we prune here, yeah, you can, you can sit down now. <clears throat> Didn't mean to, you know, scare you off or anything. But, uh, but trees try and deal with the wound by growing around it. That wound is never going to heal. In other words, when I talked about doing a flush cut here, that decay is going to work its way into the center of the tree. And you've broken through the boundaries that the tree tries to uh, make to keep the decay from spreading. Well, what we found with doing the pruning properly here, not damaging this branch bark collar, is what it's called, the swelling around the base of it, is you don't break the compartmentalization barrier that the tree has. So instead of the decay working its way down into the tree from this point, what it basically does is, is it, you may get a little cone of decay in there. Sometimes if you ever cut into a piece of firewood, you see a little pie-shaped, discolored piece. That's, that's what that's from from compartmentalization where you've worked with the berry of the tree. In other words, you prune this limb off, okay, the limb's gone, and instead of having decay going down in the tree that might affect it long term, you've just got a small little pocket that the tree walls off. Um, same thing happens with just about anything that happens with the tree. It tries to deal with its wounds and uh, wall them off. I've got a real good sample here. I do a lot of firewood cutting, so I come up with samples many times out of my wood pile. <clears throat> Some of y'all may be familiar with um, how they ran power lines in the woods. <clears throat> Anybody know how we run power lines in the woods years ago? Did they put up a power pole? Put them up, they put them up by. But when you run it through the woods and you didn't, you didn't care about where you were going from and to, they just string them to the trees. You ever see that? Okay. This piece of firewood I cut out of an old cherry that we cut down. See the wire coming out of the end of it? I was thinking it was a barbed wire fence or something. As I was splitting the wood, come out, see the ceramic insulator in here. Basically all they did was screw it into the, into the tree, attach the wire to it, and then come to find out sure, there's a building way in the back, like a, an old small barn that was there, and that's where they had run the power line. But that's compartmentalization. The tree's got something, it can't get away from it, so it's gonna grow around it cover over it, which it almost completely did, except for where the wires came out. Completely covered over it. Very good example of it. You can see further down on here, there was a spot where it had compartmentalized, just grown right around it. And uh, for years and years, this tree grew on without any problems at all. That didn't really affect it. Something else killed this tree, but those wires were still there. So, interesting what the trees can do. I mean, I'm sure you've all heard stories of horseshoes found in the middle of the tree, which I finally did find one a few years ago. I'd been in the business for 20 years before I found my first horseshoe in a tree, but sure enough, when you, when you do make a cut, when you're not doing a flush cut, your cut many times is one third the size of, of what it would be when you're doing a flush cut. So it's much easier for the tree to callus over, cover over that pruning wound and heal over it, which it will do in time, as long as it's healthy, it will do that. It's a good question about elevating lower branches on trees when they're, when they're planted. Um, generally, my recommendation for that is to, when you put a tree in, let it grow. Um, just like with watering, with not, you know, not putting any fertilizer on it, things like that. There's certain things you want to do and don't want to do in the first year. I would not take any branches off a tree in its first year. Let it get established, let it grow. Um, and then when you do start doing some elevation work on it, 
what I would do, say for example, on this maple tree, um, you may want to cut, say, after it's gone through its first growing season, maybe cut one, what we call a whirl of branches, a grouping of branches together. You might be able to cut maybe some three or four of these lower branches off. And these are minor ones at this point anyway. You can cut some of those off to elevate it up. What you have to do though is be thinking for the future. How's this tree going to develop? How do I want it to develop? Um, <clears throat> some of these lower branches that you see here that are larger ones on this tree now, as it develops and turns into a shade tree, you may not want them. That, that may be a tree that's a, a limb that's expendable for the tree, but if you cut it off now and just strip it up, again, goes back to what I said before. Anything you do to the tree, it's going to respond to it. So if you take too many of the branches off, the tree's going to respond. Its, it's hormonal system gets activated then it's going to say hey wait a minute we don't have enough foliage here encourages the root system to pull more water and nutrients out because we got to put out more foliage the problem is it's not always going to put that foliage on at the top of the tree it's going to usually show up as epicormic branches and suckers coming off the trunk of the tree which is defeating the purpose of you pruning lower branches off it's coming right back out where you don't want them it's wasting a lot of energy for the tree that doesn't need to be wasted um, so what we usually recommend is just going a few branches at a time, elevate it up. If the tree doesn't respond, if you don't get any suckering and it continues to develop a crown, then you can work your way up, maybe take another branch or two. Um, usually through one growing season, though, I don't recommend pruning more than once or twice. Um, and when it leaves out the following year, then you can go in, maybe work it up some more. But it's got to go with, as the crown develops, then you can raise your lower portion of the crown out. If you're doing minor pruning, um, in most cases it doesn't, um, certain things don't matter at all. If you're taking dead wood off a tree, if you've got some dead branches in the crown of this, it really doesn't matter what time you take them off. Because the tree is already, the fact that it has no branches on it and no live buds, if it's not green, the tree's already walled it off. It already knows it's dead, it's already written it off. It's already starting to compartmentalize that branch to form a barrier so that decay and insects can't get down into the live part of the tree. So those can be pruned off. It really doesn't affect the tree at all. When you're taking live off, most, if it's minor, it's really not going to affect the tree that much. Um, the exception to that is a um, couple of examples. Here we have a lot of pine trees. You go in and start pruning on pine trees during the growing season when the pine bark beetles are apt active, you've actually just cut a nice little wound on the tree and the pine bark beetles can go right into it. Um, I've seen many problems develop with sometimes utility pruning. They do it during the growing season and the pine beetles might go in the, the cuts that are made by the pruners. Um, Dogwoods have borers that bother them sometimes, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do a whole lot of pruning on them during the growing season, wait till the, the fall or even the ideal is during the dormant season. <clears throat> sometimes you have to learn a little bit more about what the buds look like, the live growth on a, a plant, so that during the dormant season, even when there's no foliage on it, you can determine what's still alive and what isn't. So it takes a little bit of uh, practice sometimes, a little bit of experience to, to learn what's healthy buds and uh, what to prune to and, and uh, encourage your growth, you know, in the healthier branches. <clears throat>